Holy crap! Oh jeez! That's it. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. He has put these things together and with all kinds of random... A car bumper. Yeah, he likes to put cars. What this is is a taste of the future, dude. <laughs> oh, Not even kidding. These are amazing endeavors that what one can do, you know? And it's just unlimited. So he built all of these? I think so. Bruce is the guy who takes care of him. Bruce, where the gas can is, he lives there. Hi, I'm Bruce. I live in a cave, and that's about all there is to it. This is Joe and Rebecca's cave in Elk Bend, Idaho, and we're about to maybe stay in the cave. We just found the key. Ooh. Awesome. All right. Oh my God, dude. <clears throat> Julie. Yeah? We need to get a cave. <laughs> get kitty. Have a seat. Sit down. There's chairs here. Great. Yeah. Let me move some stuff so you can sit. Let me just light my lantern here. All right. What did you fill it up with? Gasoline. Whoa! Whoa. There you go. I was born in uh, Wyoming, but I lived uh, 20 years or so in Connecticut. How did you find out about this place? I read about him in a magazine, and I thought, oh, I, I want to go there. You know, I always wanted to go see this guy and see what he was all about and check the caves out and stuff and uh, then all of a sudden I found myself you know in a position where I was single and I could do whatever I wanted and you know so I bought a Harley and hit the road and I came here and I saw a dugout and he gave me a tour of the caves and everything and I thought well you know this is cool so I rented a cave and I just stayed I kept my Harley right under my bed there it's been a good three years yeah. at least he wears this all the time. He has a hat like this, Dick. And he pro that wheelbarrow probably has a billion rocks put in it. Before, you know, I mean, this is probably all his tools because he built all this. He was be here back in the 30s. He passed through, but he came here in 48 and he started mining. And he dug all these tunnels into the side of the hill, you know, mining, looking for gold or whatever he could find. and. His first winter here, he spent in a pup tent, and he quickly realized that it was a whole lot warmer in the mines than it was in the tent. So he just moved into his caves, and naturally everything that followed, he just realized it would be warmer if I built a wall there, you know, to keep the wind out, and it just was a natural progression type of thing. I mean, this guy's 92. I bring him brown bread in a can cost three dollars and he eats he eats almost the whole thing I bring him the thing of yogurt he ate the whole entire thing wow and he gives it to the cats I was born in Indiana I lived in Michigan four years I don't away from home it's coming out here I was out here about ten years and finally Got the herds and sheep and got tired of doing that. Be here one year herds and sheep and I moved right in here. That's what I done. I rode the freight train in 14 states, so I've been around the country a little bit before I come in here. I had lots of rocks, wanted a place to live. I built down below a big rock house down there. Then I come up here and they go looking for me, I was I'm not home. But I was up here working in the garden. I was home all the time. I said, I'll build a home up here. They had to come up here and see me. That's what I did. I had to get, make money some way, and so I started making cave for other people. I got one couple of them for myself, and I let them out. Sometimes they wouldn't stay very long, so. But then, then I got a few people living here, and steady. 
Bruce up here, he's been, he's working here at the bean plant. He gets wood up there and brings some in for me too. I work at a beam factory. We make glue lamb beams and I supplied dugout with wood. I paid my whole year's rent in advance <laughs> last year because dugout's truck broke and he needed some work done on it. So, so I just paid him a whole year's rent in advance. So that's like 300 bucks? 300 bucks, yeah. What do you like about living in a cave? It's cool, cool in here in the summertime. It'd be 100 out there and here it's nice, nice and warm, cool. So can you stay pretty warm here in the wintertime? Oh yeah, really, wow. really easy. We've had 20 below, you know. But you, you've got to understand that you're taking advantage of deep earth temperature. You know, which is like, what, 57 degrees mm -hmm. or something like that. Well, I got mud. I'm under the hill there. It's cool. And I mean, you go under three feet of dirt. It's cool. Already cool. And you're about six feet above you here. In the daytime, I mean, when the sun is shining in the winter, this place just lights up. You know, the whole front is windows and it faces the east, southeast, whatever and the sun just shines in. So it's like passive solar. This is my wood stove. I use one five gallon pail of wood scraps a day to heat this place. That's what I use. During the winter? Yeah. yeah. This oven here, I cook Thanksgiving dinner in this oven every year. I roast a big turkey. They give me a turkey at work. I roast it in here. I make a big Thanksgiving dinner. And it's funny because down at Elk Bend, uh, the ladies auxiliary or whoever it is, every year they do this big Thanksgiving dinner because for these poor people that live in the caves. <laughs> but nobody ever shows up because <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner is right here. You know, we do this big, I mean, I really, I mean, I make everything, you know, the yams, the potatoes, the, the whole everything. And we're like packed in here because it's this little cave, you know. We actually spread out to various different caves because there's so many people. And the ladies' auxiliary is down there and nobody shows up for their, you know, they're, they're nice. You know, they're trying to do this for the poor people that live in the caves, but we're not poor, you know. Yeah. They think we are, you know, but it's not that way. What do you do about refrigeration? Uh, we got the ice caves down there. I got ice down below. Stays here around the ice. Uh... Dugout was mining and he dug into the side of the mountain and he ran into ice. When I made the first road in by hand, I hit the oh, ice in the hill. I couldn't go through it. I had a little fire and fall out. So I get into the hill. It's like walking into a walk-in refrigerator, you know, a walk-in cooler. So if you want to refrigerate stuff, that's, you know, Just that's easy. Just take it down there. Yeah, yeah, that's easy. We keep our beer in there. I have this solar panel. It charges the battery and the, the battery has this light on it. It's so, uh, it's a uh, fluorescent light. It works really good. I mean, you turn the light on, it's like, oh, you know, it's a fluorescent light. <laughs> you can also plug anything into it, 12 volt or DC or AC. Uh, the cons of living in a cave? I don't know. You know, there's no, there are no cons of living in a cave. <laughs> when I was a kid, my parents, we used to, we lived in a big house and all that. And on the weekends, we would go camping. You know, we'd go out and set up a tent. We lived out in the woods, you know, for the weekend. And I thought that was great, you know. I thought, why don't we always do this, you know? <laughs> why do we live in the house all week and then just do this on the weekend? It should be the other way around, you know. And so, I don't know, I, I like a primitive lifestyle, I enjoy it. This whole place is made out of junk and garbage and rocks and whatever was found discarded. It didn't cost one dime to build this place, not one dime. This stove came out of the dump because back in the 50s or 40s, whatever it was, when they came out with gas and electric and all that, everybody was throwing away their stoves, their old wood stoves. So this thing was just tossed in the dump and dug out went and picked it up. Think about how much uh, impact on the environment I have living here. That's like zero. Yeah. <laughs>
I burn one five gallon pail of wood a day. Some people argue burning wood makes smoke and it pollutes the environment. Okay, you know, how much did you pollute the environment when you built your house? If I knocked your house down and took the wood from your house and put it in my stove, I could burn that stove I, night and day for a thousand years, I'll bet you. And that's not including all it took to get the wood. You know, your cars, your trucks, your chainsaws, the transportation, the milling, the electricity, the fuel. I could live here for a thousand years and heat this stove 24 hours a day on what your house is. I mean, look at me. I live in a cave. I've got everything you've got. I've got a comfortable chair. I've got a warm stove. I can cook. I can sleep. I can read. I can do everything that you can do and enjoy it just as much. Maybe more. Probably a lot more because you're going to get all pissed off when your furnace goes out and you can't take a shower in the morning. I'm not going to worry about it. I just throw a pot on the stove and heat up some water and take a shower. If the electricity goes out, I won't even know it. <laughs> I won't. I, I would have no idea that the electricity went out. But it's going to screw you up big time. You know? <laughs> Basically, modern man is, is abusing the earth very very severely progress the way people look at it is all these great technological things you know but it, it's really hurting the planet what we really need to do is regress and maybe ride horses maybe you know maybe uh grow gardens more than we do maybe live in a cave you know mark's gonna go have the adventure for both of us i just hope that the um the yetis don't eat him. He did tell you about the yetis, right? They're yeah. yetis? Yeah. There could be worse ways to go than dying in a cave on a 50-state road trip. That Not would be, many, but a few. That'd be sort of epic, especially after documenting it like this. Yeah. Hell, I'll probably die with the camera in hand. This recording. could be like your epilogue. We'll show this that you wake. <sighs> Have fun, man. Ah. Uh. So I'll be sleeping in a cave in a mountain by myself. Sleeping with... Friends of Dugout Dick. This is it. Thanks, Joe, for uh, letting me stay here. Okay. Here it is. Home sweet home. At least for the night. Hmm. Okay. I think it's time for bed. So it's morning time. I just woke up, and there weren't any bugs, no weird noises. Nothing really much at all, and that was the nice part. It was peaceful. Peaceful, simple, simple living. I came here weighing 192 pounds. I weigh 167. America, you want to lose weight? W-O-R-K. <laughs> Work. I know there are people who have lived in caves in Central Park. And the squirrels in Central Park are really fat. You get yourself a 22, you can feed yourself really well. I was in Central Park and I wanted to shoot those squirrels and I talked to a cop and he says, probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, Simon, you're a moon. Down the trail, I'll be there. On a cool summer night, I know you still care. Oh, Simon, near tears in my eyes. Does she wait for me still, just on the other side? Now, my love, I assume. Oh, Simon, river moon, you're coming back to me. I'm your sensitive. Now the moon's going down in the winding hill. Simon, river moon, I'm waiting still. That's it.